Hi, this is Henry Ryanga, and we're just coming to you today because someone very special um, stopped in at Christian Leaders Institute, Dr. Howard Brown. And we're gonna, I'm gonna interview him a little bit today. What I especially like is this man of God is an overcomer. And God has used him in a mighty way to impact lives with leaders of disability throughout the whole country. So I wanted to, um, he, he and Dr. Brown did not figure that he was coming to be interviewed today. I, I just met him, he's uh, mentors for students here at Christian Leaders Institute. So he's actually an active mentor, he's on the network. But you also have quite a story. So can you get, just give me a little background of what happened to you? How did you get to the place where you are today? Well, I felt my first calling when I was in third grade. In third grade, I went to a Baptist Bible school. Okay. And I was sitting, at, you know, the Baptist always call for people to come forward to be baptized at the end of the service. Right. So I was sitting in the row with my parents, my mother and my father, who was not around much due to alcoholism. Okay. And uh, all of a sudden, I felt a presence next to me. And the presence said, get your, get your father to go with you and go up front okay. and go forward. And I thought to myself, how am I gonna do this? I'm just a little kid. Right, right. Well, I stood up and I said, Dad, come on come with me, come with right. me, you know, I need you with me. Right. And he said, no, no, I'm not doing that. Right. No way. And I said, if you won't, I'll just go alone. And he said, go alone. I did, I got in line and I stood and I, I moved up and moved up and moved up and all of a sudden I looked back and there he was in line with me. Wonderful, wonderful. And I feel that was the first time I was actually touched by the Spirit. And ever since then, I've been very heavy into whatever good I can do for the community. Yeah, you're a new creation. You become a new creation, and then things happen in your life. I went on to be in the military, in the reserves for 20 years. Okay. I was in the eight years in the Navy and 12 okay. years in the Coast Guard. Right here, were you in our whole Grand Haven, Michigan? No. We're by a Coast Guard station here, <laughs> but not here, right? Not here. I was I was in San Francisco in the Coast Guard okay. and in New Orleans. Okay. I was there for 9/11. Uh, okay. Got activated. Um, I retired in 2002, and all during this time, I've been in a law enforcement career, okay. a parallel career, um, full time, and. About the best thing I can say is anybody that got in the back of my car got a voice of the word. Just a little encouragement Just from the Lord. Just something, something that, that, that said that made it part seem of the not army that the bad okay. and, and encouragement. encouraging them to, you know, maybe think next time. Okay. Um, I'm very proud to say that during my time in law enforcement, I, I sent like three people on to seminary. Nice. Um, I worked in probation and parole for the state of Louisiana. Okay. And during that time, the, toward the end of my career, I was shot in the mm -hmm. head on duty. Well, hold it, hold it. Let's just back up a little bit. Um, shot in the head on duty. G give us a few details of that. What happened? Well, it's not the typical bad guy shooting. No, okay. It was a training oh. exercise. Interesting. And I had... Uh, gone through the first part of the training in the morning using the equipment I was issued and right. I was failed on something and I called that toward the senior instructor right. and the senior instructor said you were using what you're supposed to be using you didn't fail. I see. But he did kind of take it out on the instructor. Oh, okay. Later on that day the instructor had a shot at me he took it and Instead of hitting off the protective gear we were wearing and all that, it passed through here mm. and into my ear. Okay. Um, <laughs> it changed your life. It changed my life because I worked a year at, as light duty, they call right, it, yeah. going to court and interviewing yeah, people. Yeah. Um, 
and then I was placed on disability retirement. Okay. And what age were you at that time? I was uh, right around 49. So really young, relatively speaking. Right. 49 years old, you're placed on disability. Many and I, people and, and, quit. Many people would say, I'm going to just lose myself from the bottom of a bottle now. Right. And it's over. Um, God, where were you? Uh, how did this happen to me? But right. you did not quit. Oh, I, I, I went through some of that. Okay. I, I did. I That's mean, the honest truth then. You the honest, the honest truth is I, I didn't go into the bottle, but I wasn't sure why this had happened to me. Right. I had done everything right. I have a 100% conviction record. Yeah. I mean, why am I the one? And right. I loved my job. I loved my career because I was helping people. Right. Well, Katrina came along, and I worked Katrina down in New right. Orleans. Yeah. And was given the choice to move. Okay. My wife is from Grand Haven. Ah. Beautiful. We're right here in Grand Haven, Spring Lake area of Michigan. It's very cold right now for everybody. So it's yes. cold in this room. Our heater barely works. So you ended up coming to Michigan. So, so I came up to Michigan be, having been a Coastie and uh, uh, retired. Okay. Um, and all of a sudden, it was like God hit me upside the head with a two by four. So you got hit by a bullet on one ear, hit by the, a two by four on the, on the other side. Right. The okay. God hit me and he said, <laughs> okay. look it, now you've got your chance to do what I've been trying to get you to do all your life. Whoa, that's powerful. You need to be in the ministry full time. Okay. Doubt really, did you just hear what I just heard? So he's got this amazing career. He's working as a police officer. He loves it. Um, through sort of an accident of training, he gets hit in the head and then he, he ends up retiring here and the Lord, in a sense, spiritually speaking, in love, hits him with two by four, as he calls it, and calls him into ministry. Then what? Well, then I started seeking out different educational programs. Okay. Online, probably. Online. Okay. It's, I, we, we know we're online. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very, very good for me because as I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. With depression and with high anxiety. It makes it very difficult for me to go outside the front door of my house. So Literally. even coming here today is like a, a coming in uh, here today is a success story for me to have left my house and come here. But I felt a calling to come today. <laughs> well, many people who know me know that I am high octane and I'm <laughs> high stressed to be around. So I would imagine it was quite stressful the thought of coming to talk with coming here, even though you're only a half mile from here. Right. Go figure. So you study. So You're I study, okay. and I'm learning, and at the same time, I'm counseling, and I'm teaching um, different internet schools. I've been deans of admission. I've been okay. a, a doctoral thesis professor okay. uh, at, at internet schools. Right, 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 right. And I've also been on governing boards of okay. different churches that okay. are all on the internet, right. running a, a judicial branch or as a first assistant or something like that. Right, right. So in a lot of ways, and I, I kind of classify that as a lot of this internet training and, and internet stuff is sort of, sort of special ops. It's not really in the mainstream. Right. And it's special ops. You're, you're ministering to people who could not get to mainstream places, right. um, could not afford mainstream places. So, I mean, that alone, you know what, that we um, connect to you, kindred spirit, because right. we're totally online. So I, and I even know that you are mentoring like Perky, who's one of our students, and Carl, and um, who knows who else you can inspire, because you're an encourager. You're an encourager. I am. I am. Um, I've wanted to have my own church, mm -hmm. my own building. Okay. Uh, I kind of grew up always feeling that that's where I was supposed to be. Right. God put me here and had me do this. and. I, you know, you just don't say no to him. No. Well, I, I love that. One of the things we're doing, um, Dr. Brown, is we're starting a house church network worldwide. 
And, um, you know, and since you're close, I'll probably be, you know, asking you, hey, if, let's start a house church. <laughs> yeah. or, you know, whatever that means yeah. in the situation. I just finished a presentation talking about the different types of house churches that are, um, they look very different. They don't have one one specific way it looks right and god works with people the word is preached encouraged people are encouraged and all of that right so now is how old are you now i just turned 60. okay 60. so tell me where tell us where do you feel you're at right now in the journey of faith in the where god has taken to you how do you look at your future I'm unsure. Okay. Uh, the the one internet church that I've been working with um, hasn't exactly developed the way it was supposed to. Okay. Uh, the president had a stroke. Ooh. And so the the college that I was working with kind of went yeah. under. Okay. Um, and I've just been basically looking around this area. Okay. Maybe hoping to find that building. Right, right. Um, until, like I said, I drove by and, there, and I went, uh, there's CLI. Well, I know them. And, right. And then Perky talked about you and Carl right. talked about yeah, you yeah. and I got invited to a dinner. And right. Well, and, and, and two, you, you come here and, and I, really, I just met you really today. I met you briefly, but now right. we're really connecting. Right. And, you know, the thing that I find so fascinating about Christian Leaders Institute and about everything that's happening around here is um, it's as if pieces are put into place. People are coming forward. People are being raised up for revival everywhere. And sometimes I feel like um, there would be no way to reproduce what has happened in Christian Leaders Institute life in this sense. So many things that just are like odd occurrences, but we know with God they're not odd at all, that he has a plan and he raises up warriors for the battle. And then here this guy from the South, Louisiana, somehow ends up back into our area and says, look, I just want to volunteer, I want to help. Right. And, you know, to me, that's just another example that we've seen again and again and again. So, you know, I love it. You, you know, um, I'm going to connect you with Wally De La Fonte, our program guy. And we have so many things that your journey for leaders with disabilities um, know that you got someone here who understands your, your journey, right? right? I mean, you understand the whole up and the down and also the, the struggles where you're doing fine, then you get depressed. And then your doctor gives you news about this and that and all right. of these things, right. which is a common, those who have served our country, uh, uh, veterans who come back and we have so many of you out there and you are our heroes and, and you don't come back the same. No. <laughs> and, and, he, and me, I'm this last born child, never really had that kind of a path yet. Um, I probably can't understand you, but you know, Dr. Brown, you can understand at a different level. I do. And, you know, in the network and encouragement. So I, I'm just really thrilled um, the Lord has brought you here today. I hope I didn't overwhelm you, sir. <laughs> you, you didn't. The God, God prepared me for okay, everything. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, I, I, I'm I said, glad. should I wear a tie? Uh, yeah. And he said, yes. <laughs> Yeah, and, and a lot of times I don't wear a tie today. I have a tie on. This is like a beautiful day. And we're, we're taping a house church um, network presentation today, and, and we're, we're talking about the, um, our worldwide launch of our house church network, which is going to happen um, very shortly here. So it's sort of a taping day. And then yeah, I saw you on the Christian Leaders Network. We chatted a little bit, and then you said, how, can I, how about being here in 45 minutes? I thought, yeah, come on down. I want to beat you. <laughs> so these this is just wonderful and you know can I have a prayer for you as we close okay Lord I just lift up Dr. Brown here and I'm so grateful for who he is and what he has done and what he's gone through and how he can be used by God in a powerful way to spread encouragement 
to give insights to those who are on a journey that they did not expect. I pray that you will be with him now, and I thank you for him now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you.